Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this project schedule timeline. So let's get started. Now, because this is a timeline, we want to maximize the space on our page. So what we're going to do is just turn this page around to landscape. So I'm going to go up to the layout tab and go along to orientation, click on the drop down and select landscape. The next thing I'm going to do is just slightly adjust my margins. They're a little bit too wide and I want to maximize the space on this page. So again, I'm on the layout tab, go along to margins, click on the drop down and I'm going to select narrow. So then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to just press my return key a couple of times and that will allow me to just place my heading in. But first of all, I need to put in my chart. So for this particular demonstration, I'm going to select a chart which has 31 days. For that's for the month, it could be any month of the year, it doesn't matter. And then on the left hand side, I want the description of what that element is. So it'll all become clear in a second. So I'm going to go up to the table icon here. I'm on the insert tab, click on the drop down. Now I can't select 31 columns from this chart here. So I'm going to need to go down to insert table. And then I need to insert my number of columns here. So I'm going to actually insert 35 and that will become clear shortly. And my number of rows, I'm going to insert nine rows. Now, obviously you need to select as many as you see fit for your different project. I'll select one row at the top and that's to put all the numbers in and then any additional tasks you need, you need to allocate a row to. Now you can extend them, it can go over two or three pages if you want to. Uh, and it depends on how wide you want those rows. And again, that will all become clear as we go through the tutorial. And then just select OK. Now, because I hit those return keys earlier, it allows me to just go up here and then insert my title quite flexibly without having to move this table. So I'm just going to put my title in and a description below. It's just some random text, but it just gives you an idea of how you can lay out your own project timeline. So I'm just going to go to the centre tab here and type in project schedule and I just want to change the font size so I'm going to highlight that, go to the home tab, I'm going to use this increase font size tool until I'm happy and then I'm going to go along to the font and select impact and then I'm going to put my cursor on the next row down and again I'm not going to hit the return key. If I hit the return key, then I'm going to get the same font and I don't want the same font as that, which is why I've gone back to the um, next line down. Then I'm just going to insert some random text. Perfect. You can have this layout any way you choose. I've chosen to center it, but you, you can, of course, have it over to the left or right if you want to. And you do that by ensuring you're on the home tab and then using these icons here, left, center and right. Once you're happy with that, we can go ahead and have a look at how we're going to lay out this chart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my table. Then I'm going to go up to layout. Now these two tabs will only appear if you have highlighted your table or you're checked into your table. If you're clicked off, they will disappear. So highlight the table by either clicking on this top left box or you can just simply click and drag and highlight the entire table. Then go up to layout and then I'm going to go along and I'm going to play with this section here called height. Now you can input the height that you need if you know what it is or you can just use these up and down arrows here which I think are really really useful. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow a number of times and as you can see my table is extending and the rows are increasing in height. Now I'm going to do that until the rows fill the page. Now this is where you can be quite flexible. Your rows can be any height that you like, but I've chosen this height because it just fills out my page. Just reduce that slightly because I'm going to put a header on at the end. So once you're happy, then you can just click off that. 
So now we're going to put in our scheduled descriptions and at the beginning you can remember that I actually put in 35 rows but I only actually need 31 and the reason for that is because it's far easier to highlight those first four rows, go up to the layout tab and click on this merge cell icon here. If I put in 31 cells or 32 and just left one for the description, I'd have to grab this line here, pull it along and then pull everything else along and then stretch it out until I'm happy and it's just so much more long-winded to do it that way. So this is the best way that I found to do it. If you've got another way to do it, that's absolutely fine, you can do it that way. But I'm just going to go along here, highlight those first four rows and click merge cells. Okay, once you've got that sorted, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put all the numbers in at the top. Okay, so once you've finished doing that, you can see that the rows here are slightly smaller than the rows here, and it's all slightly adjusted. So what we need to do, I'm going to decrease the font size of these numbers. So I'm just going to highlight all the numbers, all the cells, then go up to the Home tab, and then again along to the Decrease Font Size icon here. I'm just going to click on that until they reduce down. Then I'm going to quickly centre them. So to do that, I'm going to go to this Layout tab again and along to this area here. Again, these are really useful because these basically allow you to place your text wherever you want to in the cell. So I'm going to choose to pop them in the middle. But again, you can choose to put them anywhere you like. You can put them at the bottom if you want to, but I'm just going to put them in the middle. Now again, this row is quite high for the information that's included in it. So I'm just going to highlight the entire row. And then again, go to the height. And I'm just going to reduce the height of that that row there by clicking on the down arrow which is going to reduce that cell height. Okay. Now I want to slightly extend the width of this cell, these rows here. So I slightly want to increase the distance between these rows just to include my text. And the way to do that is to highlight this row and again go up to layout, down to width, and then up to this up arrow here, and just click. And as you click, you can just see everything is nudging to the right. The slight disadvantage with using this particular technique is that you can see the table here has decreased the margin. So all we need to do is just click back off of there, go over to this right hand line, click, and drag it back across. Once you're happy, we want to ensure that all of these rows are equally spaced. And to do that, highlight all of these rows. Don't highlight these here because it will include these and then it will equalize everything. And then go up to the Layout tab and down to Distribute Columns and just click. And that will nudge everything to ensure that each cell is exactly the same width. Once you're happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and just input all the different information in the left hand column. OK, as you can see now, because I've copied and pasted this from a different document, my words are all over the place and aligned completely differently throughout these cells. There's a really easy way to correct it all. Just highlight it all go back up to the Layout tab and along to this section here. And again, you can customise this any way you like, put it in the centre, the left or the right. So I'm going to put it centre right. OK, so once you've aligned all of your text the way you want it, you can extend this cell again if you want all the words just on one line or you can keep it to two lines, it's completely up to you. So if I want this on one line, then I can just highlight it all highlight the entire row, go back up to the Layout tab, along to Width and just increase the width. You can continue to do that until everything's on the same line. And again, you're going to have to pull everything back over, go over to the right hand side, pull everything back over. If it doesn't pull, click again and just move it over. And then highlight those cells again, quickly go up to the Layout tab, and down to distribute columns. Now it's at this stage 
that you can save this as a template and use this chart over and over again. All you'll need to do is to change each section here if it's a different project and again any text up here. Before you do that you can just quickly edit the headers and footers. So if you want to pop something in the footer double click down the bottom and you'll see that the headers and footers appear. Just put in your random text which I'm literally putting in random text. Go up to the Home tab and again you can align it wherever you like using these icons here. I'm going to put mine in the centre and then at the top here I'm going to just enter version 1.01 .01, and then just put a random date in. And then I'm going to send that over to the right hand side. Again you can completely customise all this highlight it, go up to the Home tab, and you can use this section here to fully customise the text, change the font, reduce the size of it, put it into bold, whatever you like, even change the colour if you just want that into a very dark grey. Completely up to you. Once you're happy with all of that, you can go ahead and save this as a template. Go up to the File, go down to Save as Template. and then this dialog box will appear. And here you can see this file here, and it's really important that you save it into templates. If you don't save it into the templates file, then when you go into your Word software, it will not appear in the templates on the home page when you create a document. So it's really important you put it into here. Then all you need to do is just make sure you're on Word template here, name your document, whatever you want, and then just click Save. And then when you open a Word document again, on the home page you'll have all your different templates. Make sure you go into the personal templates and there you'll find this document. And then all you do is edit away and then when you press save, it won't save it to what you've created. It will tell you to save it as a completely new document so it won't overwrite it. So now we can go ahead and customise this chart. And the way in which we do that is obviously by using colours and colouring in these cells. Now, some of you may not be fussed about what colour they are, you might want to put them in black and white or just grey, whatever you choose, but I actually quite like to be creative, so I actually quite like using colour palettes. So I like to just quickly hop onto the internet and into Google I will put colour swatches and here you are given a huge range of different colour swatches and all I do is just take a screenshot of a different colour swatch I want to use and like and then I just simply import it as an image. So all I do now is go up to insert, picture, picture from file, and then just choose a screenshot and click insert. Now this is really gonna mess up your table, but don't panic. Once this has been inserted, make sure it's highlighted so you've got all the different squares around the outside. Go up to picture format and go to wrap text. Click on the drop down and click in front of text and everything will be restored well almost so I want now just want to crop this I don't want this hanging around on my screen as a great big image so I'm going to crop it so again picture format go up to the crop tool click on the drop down and select crop as you can see these black marks appear in the corners and the sides just drag them around the just click and drag and crop out all of the stuff you don't want. I'm going for this top swatch here. Just click and then press enter. And then you're left with this color swatch. And then you can pop it anywhere on your page. And the reason we need it on the page is because of the color wheel that we're about to introduce. So, go to your first section. Let's say demolition wants to start on day one through to day three. If we click and drag and highlight those first three cells, then we go up to Table Design, along to Shading, click on the drop down, and you've got all these different colours to select from. And again, if you want more colours, you've got your colour wheel here, and lots of other options here. But we're going to be quite specific, and we're going to match that colour swatch. So we need this eyedropper tool down here. So click on the eyedropper tool, and you get this circle here. Go over to your swatch, hover that circle over the colour you want and just click. 
and there you'll see the colour will appear in this display box. Click OK and now you can see all of these cells have been coloured. Now if you make a mistake there's two things you can do. If it's an immediate mistake you can simply press Command or Control Z and it will take you back one step. If not and you've done lots of other things since this and you just need to readjust the days again highlight the three cells go up to the shading icon and simply click no colour and it will take the colours away and then you can just readjust it. You don't have to do it for all three cells if you just want to do it for one cell. So just click on one cell, just make sure your cursor is inside that one cell. Let's say we want to take the colour out of number one. Go up to shading again and click no colour and it will just take the colour out of that one cell. So now all I need to do, I'll do a few more of these and then I'll speed up the video. So we'll do site clearance, I don't know, couple of days, go back up to shading, more colours, eye drop at all and I'm going to I'm going to select a slightly more contrasting colour if it's too similar then it doesn't necessarily show up that well and then we'll have delivery of materials that might go from those dates and click OK and then those almost might have some more deliveries the good thing is that once you've selected your colours, they will appear in this recent colour section here, which is brilliant because you don't have to keep going back to the colour wheel and the eyedropper at all. Just select those colours and then there might be some at the end there. And then again, once you've selected them, if it's the previous colour, it will appear here on the icon. You don't even need to go to the drop down. You can just click shading and it will appear here. So I'm going to go ahead and infill the rest of this chart and then come back at the end and show you how to take out these borders. Then we'll go ahead and just remove all these border lines here to just neaten it up and make it look a little bit more professional. So just highlight these cells here and then make sure you're on table design and then go along to this icon here that says borders. Click on the drop down and then we need to uncheck the bottom border, go back up and uncheck the top border, go back to borders and get rid of the left border and then click on the drop down one more time and go down to inside horizontal border and then you can just get rid of all of those borders and it looks a little bit more professional. And don't forget, you can change the entire colour of the chart, but you'll need to do that before you put in all the different colours, otherwise you have to go through and highlight every batch of cells and turn them grey or whatever colour you want the graph to be. So the best thing to do is to highlight the whole thing first, change the colour of it, and then input the different cells and colours and, and project timelines. Again, you can go up here and you can change the colour of this one as well if you want to. Uh, you can turn that into grey completely up to you. Just to finally get rid of this all you do is highlight it and simply hit the delete key. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has please subscribe and have a great day.